We're taking a closer look at a wave of deadly violence sweeping across Cape Town, South Africa. The coastal city is considered to be one of the most dangerous places in the world, mainly because of gang-related murders and crimes across the area. New surveillance video shows a shootout between gang members. Police were able to track down the main suspect thanks to this footage and a gunshot detection system called Shot Spotter. For more on this now, we want to bring in CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata. She is with us now from Johannesburg, South Africa. So, Deborah, tell us more more about this technology and how it operates within Cape Town. Well, as you've correctly pointed out, Shot Spotter is something um, that really is getting to the heart of the gang problem in Cape Town. It, in fact, was developed in the United States and is used quite effectively in a number of cities across that country. Um, what has happened is it's been brought here to South Africa. It first started, was tested essentially in Kruger National Park to assist with poaching and then was put up in Cape Town. So what happens is that they put the system in areas like the gang-related violence areas like Manenberg and Hanover Park. It's set up over a few um, square miles and the purpose is to detect gunshots. The minute a gunshot rings out, this system is able to detect that. The importance of that is that then they can turn CCTV cameras onto the area and actually see what is going on and it's hoped that this would help with the rest. The footage that you're seeing now, this man who is a member of a gang in Cape Town starts shooting. He's the shot rings out. They then turn the CCTV cameras onto him. He continues to shoot. He runs as he's shooting, as you see in this footage. And then eventually, at some point, he hands the gun to someone else, takes off the one jacket, replaces it with a white jacket, probably to avoid detection, and then continues as if nothing has happened. But this is all caught on CCTV cameras because of that initial shot being detected by this technology. Police were able to search a house, find the weapon, and a short while later actually apprehend the suspect. And a few months later, they got a successful conviction. So, so Deborah, let's put this in context. I mean, I don't want to generalize an entire city, um, and I don't even want to generalize an entire country. Uh, to me, when I read that Cape Town is dangerous, it, my visits to Cape Town, I've always been surrounded by beautiful seaside resorts, uh, wonderful restaurants. Um, so I, I, just explain to our viewers, when we talk about this technology and how it's being used, perhaps in certain neighborhoods in Cape Town, but the city itself is a tourist attraction. It's one of the most beautiful cities in South Africa. Well, Vlad, you're quite right. When we think of Cape Town, we think of a tourist mecca. It is visited by one and a half million people every year, and there's a good reason. It is exquisite. The beaches you've mentioned, the incredible restaurants, the beautiful mountains, the wine lands. I mean, one can go on and on. Any list of top tourist destinations, you will find Cape Town on that list. But it also bears the rather dubious distinction of being on another list, the list of one of the top 20 most dangerous cities in the world. And it's exactly what you've pointed to. To. Whilst many parts of Cape Town, and particularly the tourist areas, are incredibly safe, it has high statistics, murder statistics, because of gang-related violence. So there are little areas within Cape Town, what's known as the Cape Flats, which are incredibly dangerous, incredibly volatile, and incredibly violent. I think the murder rate is something like 62%. That's 62 out of every 100,000 people. In one year alone, they tracked about 2,500 murders, which makes it about 15th on this list of top 20 most dangerous cities in the world and that's what they're trying to bring down because when I spoke to the Minister of Pol essentially Police Enforcement, it's called Safety and Security in Cape Town, he said that 25 to 40 percent of those murders are actually related to gang violence and if they can pull this down obviously they um, decrease the statistics, they get off that most dangerous list, improve the quality of life for everybody but importantly actually make the place safer for everybody but because of this one area it's essentially pulling the whole city down. By comparison, Joburg, which also has a very high crime rate, doesn't even make the top 50 of most dangerous cities in the world. Oh, that's interesting. Um, this technology, this shot spotter, it's already being used in some uh, cities here in the U.S. where I live in Philadelphia, they've had it for a few years. But what they don't have is this technology working with surveillance cameras. That combination has got to have a, an impressive impact on the city. Is it changing the city? 
Well, I think that's the most interesting thing here. I spoke to J.P. Smith, who's the head of law enforcement, the local minister in Cape Town, and he said originally Cape Town had a conviction rate when it came to gang-related violence and murders of 2%. That has risen to 15%. Now, he, he's told me of an anecdote. This week, in fact, they were visited by the FBI from the U.S., and when he mentioned that it was only 15%, they, their jaws dropped in horror, because in many parts of the world, that would be considered extremely low, in fact, a crisis. But if you consider where Cape Town has come from, over a very short space of time, that conviction rate has gone up to 50%. And he puts it down to this combination. On the one hand, you have what essentially are robotic ears, this ear, this listening device, this sensitive listening device that detects the shots. Then the cameras turn around and you have the robotic eyes. And together, the solution is improving the situation. Couple that with improved policing. They now have a designated drug and gang related task force. They have dedicated investigative and prosecutorial units. That cocktail together seems to be helping. I mean, the statistics of gang related violence and the incidents are absolutely horrific. There was a video during the rounds not so long ago in which a man had tried to leave a gang. He was then beaten to within an inch of his life, his half naked body thrown into the road, bleeding um, extensively from his wounds and passers by just ignored him. Nobody stopped to help him. One woman offered up a prayer and then people started throwing concrete blocks at him. That's how desensitized people are to violence in this particular area. Children weren't even shielded from this um, horrific act. So what they are hoping is that with this, they will get that conviction rate even higher and not only make it safer and get off that top 20 list, but make it a better place for people to live in places like Manenberg and Hanover Park. Young kids growing up with that violence, they just want to get an education. They don't want to be dragged into this violence and they want to find a way out. So this is good news for a city that really needs it. Well, it sounds like it's making a difference. I hope it continues to make a difference. Deborah Pada, you are in Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you so much, Deborah.